Hey guys, it's Kelly. I'm going to show you guys how to make a mini art journal without all the fancy dyes and things like that. So this is a request of Miss Becky B on my channel. She wants to know how the heck we would make something without all the fancy dyes for an art journal. So mini art journal, I like this size and you can see it's well loved. I did use a die to get this one done. You do not have to use that. You can just use basic, basic supplies. So I'm going to show that to you. And a couple examples here <clears throat> is just any cardboard box that you have for things that you purchase regularly. Um, you, I just like one. I just like to use one that has the spine of the book. Like this one is a little thin. Like I wish this one was bigger, but it is what it is. But if you want to do one bigger, that because you do a lot of bulk, then you can get a thicker one. This one is a little bit too thick for my liking. Um, about two and a half I don't want to go bigger than two inches and this one had the spine at two inches so I've already been messing around with this one so I'm going to use that one but any cardboard box will work so what you'll need to do this if you guys are interested in how you do this um, with no dies and just basic supplies you're going to need um, some now my Mod Podge I live in Arizona in the desert it all dried up so I got a brick of Mod Podge here it happens it's just the climate that I'm in I do have some regular decoupage glue that's matte finish and this one survived the summer. So we're going to use this one here. It's still liquid. I will make that work somehow. <laughs> I will make that work. Um, but you are going to need a cardboard box with about, I definitely recommend um, starting with at least a one and a half or two inch binder. So measure that and then we'll just cut it to size for whatever you need. So you'll need the, the cardboard package, your Mod Podge. I definitely recommend Mod Podge. I think it's awesome, but you can definitely use the off brands. I got this one. It was cheaper. It was great. I recommend matte finish. If you guys watch my channel, you like matte finish. I use it all the time. So if you're just starting, I would get the matte finish for the either Mod Podge or some type of Deco Podge glue sealer. You're going to need a ruler, a pencil, scissors. I got these fancy Tim Holtz scissors, but we can just use plain scissors, Fisker scissors, whatever scissors you'd like. You're going to need a brush to spread on your, your um, decoupage glue, some water for your brush, and some designer paper. I'm letting this designer paper that I was just looking at my scraps and I thought, oh, that's probably a really good size. Um, let's see. A little smaller than what I have, but... Mm. I might change my mind, I don't know. But you, any designer paper will work and you're just gonna cover the outside of it. You're also gonna need some elastic. Now, this is something that not everybody has, but you can get it, it's not very expensive. And um, it's just plain elastic. I got this on Amazon, I will show you. It's just elastic, you're gonna reach it around and tie it in a knot and that will be your signatures inside. So you're going to need some elastic, I forgot about that. And you're going to need the kind of paper that you want to put in it. And we will, um, let's talk about that. Because depending on what you want to do in your art journal, you might want to have some thicker paper. Now, if you want to play with inks and water coloring and a lot of wet medium, then you're going to want to put maybe some, um, some heavier paper in there that is watercolor paper however if you're brand new at art journaling i would recommend that you just simply put in 110 pound cardstock you can get that nina um, 110 solar white cardstock and i would use that i wouldn't go much thicker than that the reason why i say that is because if you've seen any of the the things that i do on my channel i actually use a separate small sheet of paper that's measured to the size of my journal and I just use that and then I glue it on onto that. So if you don't have 110 pound, don't worry. You can use 90 pound and maybe you want to cut the 110 pound to play with and then glue it in your book. Up to you. I do that a lot. So my book has 90 pound paper and let me show you. So I glue stuff on top of it. So I have this blank. If I want to use this, I can. It's 90 pound. It's per, it's it's okay. But if I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to do that in my book, then I will just do something on top of it and then just glue it in. There's no rules. It's your art journal. You don't have to show it to anybody if you don't want. I hope you do share, but you don't have to. 
So I would use 90 pound paper and however many pieces you want to put in there and we'll cut it to size. We'll come back to that. Okay. So that is the bulk of what you'll need. Um, designer paper. We already talked about that. So let's cut this sucker. So all you're going to do is just use your scissors to cut it out to whatever size that you want. Now I'm a fan of the five by this one here is yeah it's like four and a quarter a little bit more than four and a quarter by six so and we can definitely do that so four and a quarter by six so that's what we'll do so you just kind of cut it down to where you have a measurable thing so i'm just going get, to get right into it guys you just cut it down to where you have a measurable um, some, or something that you can play with. I need to get this off of here, so I'm just going to cut this down. It's probably not where it's going to land, but I just, I, it's, the edge is making me aggravated. So I'm just going to cut that off and be done with it. It's a rough edge, so I want to start with like a straight edge. exactly perfect but oh well all right so this we decided this way we want this to be six and this one to be about five or four and a half that's what I think I'll do I think I'll do and again you do however you guys want so we can do six So if you don't have this cool math that I've got, don't worry, just use your ruler. Nothing wrong with that. Just go to six. Where's my, there it goes. So if I go here, I'm gonna use my mat, guys, sorry, but same thing, you can still use your ruler and you get right to six. Same thing. Get myself straight here. I've got to get my, my line straight here. We'll chop that off. Let's just get, and I'm probably do, overdoing it here, guys, but I just like to have a, a straight square starting point. Make sure all my lines are straight. If it's not straight in the end, you just mess with it until you get it to where you want it to because it's really not a big deal. Okay, and then for this one, I also, this is not straight, so I've got plenty of room to get me to six. So, I know I'm straight down here at the bottom. So I'm going to draw my line right here. And cut that sucker right off. So that I'm nice and straight. A cutter would be so much easier. But again, I'm doing this to show you guys that you can make this stuff without all the fancy things that other people show. You don't need to buy all these dies. They definitely make life a little easier, but then sometimes you buy the die and you're like, I can't figure out how to heck use this damn thing. <laughs> you know? And then you wind up just going back to old school, just scissors. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. Not a darn thing wrong with it. Okay. Then I'm as straight as I care about. I'll get this one to six. Get you to six. I'm lining up here with that line. Because that'll be my last cut right here. Well, my last cut for this one. Then I gotta do the sides. I remember I used to watch these videos and, and until I started doing this stuff myself, I was like, I thought there was like some trick, some kind of magical thing or there must be an easier way. No, everybody's doing it pretty much the same way. 
There's no trick. Okay, so now I've got my six. My six, a little off here. It's not gonna be the end of the world for me. Okay, and then from this binder here, I know this is a little misleading, ignore that, but from this side to this side to where it bends, I'm going to make that, I have to decide how I'm gonna make, how, how long I'm gonna make that. So I think I wanna make that about five and a quarter. And that's pretty much where that one is. Um, well, it's more like five and an eight and an eighth. So I'll just put them both at five and make it easy. Again, there's no, like, you, you can do it however you want. This is a custom made book. It's your book, you make it however you want. So if I'm gonna decide that I want this at five, then I'm gonna draw my line there. I'm gonna cut that out. And then again, from this binding here, I wanna put that at five. I definitely recommend having one of these mats, guys, that makes life so much easier. Like, I couldn't do this without, I don't know how I'd keep it straight, I really don't. I've been doing it too long with this kind of cheat, so they're about 15 or 16 bucks. You can get them on Amazon. I'll try and leave a link below to where I got this one. One of these I got, the gray one underneath I got from Joann's or Michael's, I think. Not crazy about that one as much as I am about this, this one on top. Definitely not straight, but that's okay. Okay, so there we go. I've got plenty of bulk in here to where I can fill it in with as many signatures as I want. And if you're not sure what I mean by signatures, I will show you here in just a second. Okay. So now I need to find some other designer paper because this one I thought I was gonna use, I can't because it's too small. So any paper you want. So. I'm just gonna grab my first, I just, I've been going through like seasonal things. I'm just gonna grab one. Don't overthink this. You can use whatever you want. I'm not gonna use Christmas or anything like that. Um, I can use denim, whatever I want. And you guys, and you can decorate it too. You don't have to just start with the designer paper, but it sure makes life a little easier. You know, where you just, well, like that. one's kind of nice. I think I'll use that one. Why not? I've had this paper pad for a very, very long time. That one works fine. It's going to get messy in the end. Put this back together. This is a big paper pad. Love this one. I think a DCWV. It's an old, old one. Okay. So now I need to cover the outside of this, but what I need is to have it go over it because what we're going to do is wrap it around. So I can't go that way. Yeah, this is really long. I'm not going to be able to use this one. So I have to make it shorter. <laughs> so I can't have it be that long. So my book pages need to be less. So I started with five, so I need these to go down to four and a half on each side. If they don't go down to four and a half on each side, I won't be able to wrap over my designer paper. This will make more sense in a second. You don't have to do this, but this is the way I like to do it. So I need to go to four and a half. And four and a half here. And that should give me just enough to get that wrapped over. And then I can still have it at 
the width I want because this is a mini art journal because if you're starting new to journaling start small if you smart too big then you're looking at this huge paper and you're like oh my god I don't even know where to begin and it's really overwhelming to look at the blank canvas or just a blank sheet of paper like that and going where do I where do I start I can tell you where to start you just slap some color down there and have a good time <laughs> but it doesn't always work for everybody so I got all kinds of book bulk here. A smaller spine probably would be better with this size, but it is what it is. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. So there's the paper I chose. So now what we need to do, hopefully this makes sense. So I'm going to wrap this up over all sides. So I want to keep it just about as, as the same for all sides. So I'm about a half an inch. I won't be able to do it on all sides half an inch, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take my ruler and go about the same amount. You guys can eyeball this. It's, it's really not a, a big deal if you don't have this perfectly centered or perfectly like sized up. Just get as close as you can. Put that there. Ah, straight lines elude me. Okay, here we go. I need to get that's going to be close enough. Cut that sucker again. This one doesn't have to be perfect because we're actually going to cover the inside too, and I'll show you that as we go. Which I am good to get. It's the first time I'm recording using my phone because the audio is a little bit better on that. So, okay. So now what we're going to do is put our. I like that finish. We're going to put our decoupage glue on here and glue that down. Before we do this, though, one thing this is a this is a tip trick that you guys will. Fine, useful. It is important to, in, in your supplies, sorry, something else you might need, would be a little mini spray bottle. Reason being is because once we wrap this up, the paper can, can tear. Again, it's not the end of the world if that happens, but I don't like it when it happens. So if I have a way to avoid it, I want to. So if you spray it really lightly and get the paper just a little wet, you see it start to curl? It's got a little bit more. I'm breaking up some of those fibers in there. Don't soak it. You know, just get it a little, little moist. And you see how it bends more. That's going to help when I try to force it around this. Okay. So let me see if I can keep this. Ah, uh, it's really goopy. It's going to be what it'll be. See, don't be scared just go for it and you're gonna get messy with this stuff just let it happen does not matter I haven't made one like this in a long time so I'm seriously just winging this right now on a Sunday night <laughs> just winging it here we go and then you put it down there You don't have to use this guys you could just keep using your hands but for the sake of the video and I'm trying to make sure that it all gets down and I'm doing it live so I'm not going to be editing this I'm just gonna push that down but using your hands is perfectly perfectly fine so now that it's still a little wet bend it over a little bit so what happens a lot to people is that you start bending it and then it starts cracking here this paper isn't too thick, so I don't anticipate it to be a huge problem. But if you're using really thick, really high quality um, designer paper for your cover, you, you might crack here. And if you do, we can just reinforce it. You would just cut another piece of designer paper and put it over there and reinforce it that way. 
not the end of the world. Again, it's your book. There's no right or wrong. There's no, oh, I did that wrong. It's yours. You do it however you want. Okay. So this is going to have to take some time to dry. And the other thing that we'll do is, and you can do this while you're while you're waiting for it to dry. Ugh, my Mod Podge is cheap. It's probably not going to stick very well. But again, it's just somewhere to house some stuff. So now what we want to do is you want to cut at a little bit of an angle here. So I'm going to show you of an angle here. And then a little bit of an angle there on all the sides here. A little bit of an angle here, a little bit of an angle there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Perfect is boring. Think about it. If you got perfect, then what? Then what would you do? Then what would I reach for? Boring. Perfect sucks. Let's get rid of those. I have to keep teaching that paper where I want it to go. Keep bending it. Now what we're going to do is flip these over. It's going to look messy. I'm okay with it. And you guys just need to be okay with it. Ugh. I haven't touched this decoupage glue in like, I don't even know how long. It's been over a year. So I'm just going to slap it down here. And then what you do, another thing that might be helpful guys, I'm very sorry, if you don't have a bone folder, you can definitely use a ruler to do this. And I'll show you. You're just going to bend this up and over, okay? I like my bone folder, it's just my jam, I don't know, I just do. So you're gonna bend that up and over and glue that down just like that it's okay if the glue gets out and oozes out no problem we can be like we're kids and like you know peel the skin off like you did when you were in kindergarten <laughs> there we go my paper is still moving with me which is great now i'm going to do the other side messy messy which is what makes it so much fun it all cleans up with just some water and a rag seriously don't freak out okay then again you can use your ruler scoop it underneath and use the flat edge of it just to bend it over definitely makes things easier gets on your ruler who cares it comes right off really bullies all done but I need to hold it down just for a little bit don't worry about how ugly it looks now because we're going to cover this too with another piece of paper whatever designer paper you like you can put plain paper it doesn't have to be designer paper you can use whatever the heck you want you can put newspaper on it or a magazine you put whatever the heck you want on it i'm a fan of designer paper that doesn't mean that that's the only option okay i want to keep reminding it so that the paper learns which is i know weird but i said it <laughs> i can't unsay it it needs to learn where its new home is so now we do the other side in the same manner I'm okay with filling in these gaps down here. Again, use your ruler. Bend it over. Quick and easy. Nice straight edge. If you get tips on the edge, guys, don't worry about it. Seriously, don't even worry about it. 
need to get my baby wipes. The other thing, if you guys don't already have in your craft room, is the cheap baby wipes. I think I got these from, here, I'll show you. Hold on. I'll get this off my hands. I need my baby wipes. Hold on one second. I got these either from Walmart or Fry's. I don't remember. But they sure make life easier in my craft room. It makes cleanup super easy. The other thing for cleanup that I've shown you guys in my videos over and over and over again is just a little bottle that you can squirt of hand sanitizer. It cleans up so, so great. Love that. That's how I will clean this up when I'm done for the day, like, or the night. <laughs> That's how I will clean it up. And these make quick cleanup for all your stuff, especially when you're playing with the decoupage. Okay, it's going well. Now we'll go over here, finish this side. I know I'll have to clean it up again. That's okay. It was just getting a little too goopy. I don't want it to get all over the, the front of my um, my book because I'm not sure how I'm going to decorate it. I'm not going to get too an anal about it because I'm not loving the designer paper I chose, but I needed to choose something really quick because I could get lost in my paper stash for like seven hours just trying to find the right the right cover. <laughs> It's just not worth it. There we go. Get my corners down good. Okay. Gotta allow this some time to dry. And you see how it's getting wet? You see it kind of warping? Don't care about it. Who cares? It doesn't matter. So there. Basically you have a book already. Look. How easy is that? Super easy. Let's find some more paper. Now, we'll find some paper to put on the inside here. And we'll just cut it to size. And again, if you're not good with measuring, like me, because I'm not very good with me measuring, um, I don't know. I just look at it and put it down and go okay where does this look like it goes and I pencil mark it and cut it moving on this one looks fun I don't use these paisleys for anything ever so I might as well put it on here yeah I know you guys probably can't see this I'm, I'm a little off camera sorry guys ah I just tore it wrong. there why not I'm not a fan of the paisley pattern but maybe it's just because I haven't found something to use it on so I know, and I want to go right up to the edge. So I know that this is six and a quarter, right around there. Six, right about there. So if I go to six, I'll be good. And then all the way across. If I go to ten... Ten and three quarters, I'll be good. So six, ten and three quarters. So let's measure. I got glue on me. use my mat just to make it easier interesting I'm all quiet sorry focusing ten and three quarters That's right about there. I 
Ah, we'll cut that bad boy. I can tell you guys how many times I have screwed up measuring. I just, I don't know, I just, I, I get, I get the left and right and up and down always mixed up. Just, I'm, I'm always distracted, I think. Okay, put that aside. There we go. And that's going to work out well. The other thing I want to do with this is because I'm going to spray it again because I'm going to be bending it and I don't want it to rip. So really light mist on it just to make it a little bit more workable. And it already, like, you see how it makes it just, it's ready to bend wherever I need it to. And my microfiber rags are great in the craft room, if you guys don't already know. So now, I've got my measurements look good. Cool. So now I'm just going to slap it down. Make a big old mess. This, I freaking love this. It reminds me when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> Which, I'm pretty old, so it was a really long time ago. <laughs> when you're doing projects and with the little pom-poms and glitter and all this stuff that, oh my god. Love it, love it, love it. I'm going to take my glue all the way out to the edge here because I don't want to miss it. I don't want it ripping up later because when I use this book, and I'll do videos with me doing this book for sure, but... When I use this, I don't want it ripping up because it's going to be manhandled a little bit. Put that right there. And wait for that. And we're just going to have to be quick about it. What I like about Mod Podge and the Decopodge glue is it gives you time to just wiggle it around. So I know that it's not going to be lined up perfectly because my 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 book is a little bit wonky. I don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. I just I'm I'm winging it. I'm doing it. And I'm okay with it being imperfect. It's not perfectly lined up. This is not a gift that I'm making for anybody. I've made plenty of journal gifts for other people. I would definitely take more time. And you can too when you decide to do that or if you decide to do that. But for the purpose of just showing you how this is done, Keeping it simple. Okay. And it's starting to pull away. So I'm going to wipe that off real quick because I'm going to have to push it down and I don't want the glue to get on my designer paper. So I'll dry that off real quick. Okay. See how it warps? It's because it's cardboard and paper. And it's getting manipulated. So it doesn't like to move. We don't want it to tear. So we got to keep forcing it through. If this inside page comes out beyond, who cares? Cut it off. It doesn't matter. I can see that it's starting to come beyond. I don't care. I'll just cut that off. When it's dry, I'm going to wait it's giving me just enough wiggle room. Yeah, it's probably going to tear a little bit on the inside. I'm alright with that. It'll be alright. There we go. It's still wet and soggy, but once it gets dried, it's going to be perfect. Because I'm impatient. I'm going to cut this off now. Seriously. I'm very impatient. If you guys have watched any of my videos, you know that's true. I am an impatient crafter. It's crooked. See, that's what I get. That's what I get for not waiting. Yeah. I'll probably sand it. Nope, I can't stand it. I got to do it now. <laughs> Just how I roll. All right, cool. Good enough. 
Now it is. And you'll feel it when you do this, like depending on the kind of cardboard that you use, you'll feel it feel like squishy. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So this will take some time to dry. But now what do I do? Where do you get the pages? Let's go there. So we're going to put this aside, let this dry. I'm going to leave it turned up like this so that as it dries, the paper remembers where I told it to go. So we'll leave it just like that and let it do its thing because it'll still be movable and bendable. Okay, so pretty cool, huh? Super easy. Got that done. We're done with this. I'm going to stick that in my water. Done with that part. Now we're going to move to the paper. So let me get my 90 pound paper. I'm going to use so if you don't have a cutter you got to use scissors right you all know how to use scissors but how do you measure what you want it for so if we want to use it in here we want to give ourselves some room so we're going to cut some some elastic to hold the papers so we're going to have paper that is long and bending just like the book bends so you have a front and back. So if you take this and you want to keep it very, very simple, you would just simply wrap it around the book, tie a knot, and then you put your, your signatures in here. So, and I'll show you what I mean. So if we measured this to be four and a half here, then I don't want these pages four and a half, they need to be less. So I want them to be about four. So that's going to give me some room here. Um, if I go straight four and a quarter, I might be able to get away with that, but it's going to it's going to jump out. So I wouldn't do it for more than four, which means if we go both ways, it's going to be eight. So I need it eight because I need it to come. It'll stop here, come up this way and that way, and then lengthwise is six, but I'm probably going to bring this down to five and a half. You probably can't see that, so it's six. So I'll make it five and a half. By, <laughs> that's funny, five and a half by four and a quarter. That's like perfect card size. <laughs> that works out. So eight. We're going to make it four. I think four and a quarter. So we'll make it eight and a half. By five and a half. Let's try that. So, and I'm going to cheat. I'm going to get out my cutter. I love this cutter. It is awesome. I don't need to use this big one though. Hold on. Because I can use, oh, no, I have to use the big one. So this one is amazing. You can get any cutter that you have. I have the sliding cutters. I have lots of different cutters. This is the one that's closest, so I'm going to use it. So eight and a half, which is um, where I am right here, right? So I don't need to change that. Eight and a half. And I said by five. Five and a half. And then what we'll do is we'll fold that in half perfectly. And then it would go in here. Okay? So eight and a half. By five and a half. Look, see? Works out perfect. I only have to cut each one in half. So literally all you have to do is take your paper. Eight and a half is exactly where we need it to be. And then you take them all and you cut them all at five and a half this way. Get my act together here. I've got a few pieces of paper here. Five and a half because this is an awesome trimmer. So there I go. So that's several pieces of paper. You can do as many as you want. You don't have to fill your book instantly. You can only start with a smaller amount. Hold on.
So now you just take them. Fold them in half. Then you have to decide how many um, signatures you're going to have in here. So my signatures, I mean, how many how many elastic ones will you have in here that are going to hold these pages in place? Now, I like to have them loose to where I can take them out and work on them because if I'm trying to work in this book and art, no, pull it out. Have the paper ready to pull out. Or what you can do like I like to do most of the time is I like to just go ahead and take a separate piece of paper and measure it to size and then I do whatever I want with it and then I place it in my book. My book is just the holder of the art um, and if I want to use the actual paper that's in there I can but I found that if I take that out and I've got double pages like if, if this is one page I want to work on what if I have something here here and here as I'm going back and forth and slapping stuff around I might mess up that design and I don't want to do that. So that's what works for me. Do you find out what works for you? Again, it's your journal. You, there are no rules here. You do it however you want. However you want. But this is a great start for those of you that don't have fancy dyes. And there's lots of videos out there of people doing something really, really similar to this. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I wouldn't want to do more than four at a time just because I'm going to bulk it up probably. So you feed these into each other like this. One, two, three, four. Okay. That's my first one. And my second one. One, two, three, four. Okay. Then my book. growing on me. It's, I, I kind of like those. <laughs> I've never been into them. So there's all kinds of different ways you can do this. You can put holes in here if you have a uh, hole punch. You can put holes in here and do it that way. I've done that many a times. Um, I like to have the holes in there. You don't have to. You definitely don't have to. And I'm going to show you how to do it without it. Okay. So if I want to pull this around. You need it you need it kind of tight, but not like end of the world tight. Just cut it to where you think it'll give you just a little bit extra. It's this simple, guys. You literally just bring it in and tie a knot. That's all you do. I want it to be this is not the best elastic, I'll tell you that, but I just bought it. It was on Amazon and I got what I got. But you can buy better elastic and I would recommend it. But this is what I have. It serves its purpose. There it is. So that's the first one. You take your thing, stick it in there. There's the first one. Do it again. You can measure this if you want, but literally just, just play. Just do it. <laughs> Don't overthink it. Tie a knot. Cut it. You can make as many of these as you like. Again, I would only start with two, but again, it's up to you. I got plenty of room here. I could put another one in here if I want to. But that's how you do it. And then if you want, you can take um, some designer paper. Once you get all your elastics on there, if you're set and you know you're not going to change it, you can actually put a custom binder on here, just like this. Like, let's say you had your paper's tearing here. If your paper tears here, I, I, if you put water on it, it's, it's nine times out of ten, it's going to protect it and you're not going to have tears. 
but over time it might start to tear. If it does, again, your book, alter it as you see fit. But you could just put a binder on here and glue it on here and cut it to size and customize it. Now it matches the inside. How cool is that? You can get crazy with however you, want, you guys want to fix it. But for this book being mine, I'm going to add one more signature on it. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to put holes in here. One, two, three. I like how bulky this is. I got plenty of room here. Ooh, I'm really liking this book now. So I'll probably put another one in here and more paper in it and go with it. But why do it now? Because I'm going to let it build itself and create itself. And that's kind of what happened to this one here. This is one that I used, and, and I actually like this one better than this one that I used for the die. I actually like this one better. This is a cool one with all the little pockets and things, and I can put little little extra things in here, like like if I color something, I'm like, oh, I want to do something with that one time. So I can, I can hold stuff in there, which is cool. Um, but this one is really small. So you can go as small or as big as you want, but again, if you're just starting, please start small because you get it's easy to get overwhelmed. And... Um, and then just go, oh, I can't do this. I'm going to quit. But if you start with really small projects, like like if, if, if butterflies are your jam, then have a whole signature of all butterfly themes, you know, or if, you know, mushrooms or, or, or whatever, or if you like shapes, if, if you're, you know, abstract, if you like vintage, whatever you like to do, you can have each one have its own feel. I kind of tend to go in that direction, but, you know. I wing it. I do what I want to do when I want to do it. I got all kinds of different little things in here. But once this is complete, I'll show you guys. But I made it way too big, so I'm going to have to take this last signature out. So that's what I'm telling you. You know, to start smaller and then build as you see fit. So, because I learned from this. This isn't a mistake. It's just fun that I'm having. But, but I really like how this one turned out. So, Becky B, I hope this helped you. I hope you make one. Please let me know if you do. Tell me in the comments if you do. If, you, if you're comfortable with sharing, at least pictures or what have you, you can send them to me. I would love to see it. All right, so let me know in the comments if this helped you guys. Let me know if you're going to make one. Please don't hesitate to share. Maybe I'll do a hashtag, like, um, I don't know. I'll add it in the description if I do, because if we can, if I can hashtag and see what you guys do, so you could just put a picture and tag it somewhere, like an Instagram or Pinterest or wherever you choose to do it. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe I'll start a Facebook group too. So, but there it is guys. I hope that this helped and I will have a lot more to come and I will show you guys what I make in this journal as well. Have a good one guys.